Today, in the long-awaited follow-up to the original Windows 8 Pentium 4 computer tour video, we will actually be diving in and doing a full tour and review of Windows 8 itself. Hello and welcome back to the all-new Channel 2012. This might be a little longer review, so I'm going to uh, dive right in and get started right away here. We're going to be doing a full review today of Windows 8. This will be from the perspective of a pretty average Windows user. I've had this uh, up and running now for uh, probably a few months since the uh, release of the first video I did on it uh, a little while ago. So let's go ahead and start it up. We're going to do a live review here. After it starts up, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Camstasia Studio so that we can do a uh, screen record version of this. So hopefully only a couple minutes of this in total will actually be recorded through the lens of the camera. So it's starting here does start very quickly, I noticed. And here we are. It has started up. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, uh, <laughs> I will try my best to explain this to you. There's a lot of strange new things that uh, Windows has added with Windows 8. Some for better and some for worse. The first is this. I call it the T&D screen. It, all it does is shows you the time and date and a random picture of your choice as well as the uh, current status of your network, whatever that may be. The screen does nothing, and all it does is go away as soon as you hit the Enter key. It's already scrolled away there. This is what the user selection screen looks like. Pretty boring, pretty basic. You just pick a face from the list there. I've, been, I've got both my account and the guest account enabled, so you can see what this looks like. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and log in as myself, and then I'm going to switch over to Camstasia Studio, and we'll do an in-depth review of Windows 8. Unlike previous versions of Windows, where when the first time you logged into your account, the start menu would automatically open and tell you about all these great features, Windows 8 automatically opens the start menu every single time you log in. So here it is. This is the brand new Windows 8 full screen start menu in all of its glory. Um, you know, it's, it's as exciting as a start menu can be. You can see there's a few things that kind of scroll and update and show cool pointless stuff. But other than that, it's still basically the same old thing, uh, even if you uh, don't see it quite at first. What you see here is all your uh, programs, and you can customize the order and exactly where and how you want these to show up and stuff, and how you want them to look. Uh, just like before, uh, the only difference now is that you cannot have this just show your most used programs you have to customize this yourself to see the, the full programs list instead of floating over a button you have to right click wait for this big blue thing to pop up and then click on all apps this pulls up the program listing which now takes up the whole screen and is sideways scrolling you can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have one it automatically expands all the folders and shows everything right in there. And then to get back to the rest of the start menu, you just have to hit the start key on the keyboard. Another thing all new to the start menu are these uh, applications that run within the start menu. I call them start menu applications. And whereas all your normal applications will all be basically the same color as the background, start menu applications will have some funky purple or blue or green color. I'll open this one called Store to demonstrate. 
You'll note you've opened a Start Menu application when you see this colorful box go full screen and you'll see those dots spin at the bottom of the screen there and some uh, two-tone icon in the uh, middle of the screen. And here it is. This is it. That's all there is to it. This boring white background, black text with boxes in it is what is the same layout as what most of these Start Menu applications look like. This particular one is like a, um, a knockoff of the iPhone application chest. And you can scroll with the scroll wheel or grab the little scrolly thing at the bottom of the screen to see all the great um, Start Menu applications that you can uh, download and stuff. Most of them are pretty useless or they're redundant. They're things you can just have in your browser already like eBay. Most of this stuff is fairly pointless. Now with Start Menu applications, if you for some reason choose to use any of them, is where the controls get kind of dicey. You may have noticed that there's uh, um, a lack of controls on the screen that you can click. And that's not entirely true. Uh, at this point I will introduce to you guys uh, Microsoft's new favorite feature of Windows, and that is the corners. There is now all sorts of goodies in the corners of the windows. Uh, and this is where things get kind of confusing. Uh, no matter where you're at, you can always move the mouse to the bottom left corner and bring up that little thing and click that, and that'll bring you to the Start menu. Now, if you want to close the Start menu, under most circumstances, you can either hit Enter, or you can just hit the Windows key on the keyboard. Although, this gets a little dicey if you have Start menu applications open, because then they'll kind of still show up and then you have to move your mouse all over in the corner and pull up these confusing things and you can click desktop from there. If I haven't confused you yet, that is how confusing it is. Here's what the desktop looks like for uh, for me anyway. I've, I've been using this for a few months now um, and it looks pretty much the same as the Windows 7 desktop. To open that start menu again, you can just hit the start menu on the keyboard or move your mouse here to where the start menu icon should be all the way in the corner and then click start and it will come up. Another feature that is still present in the start menu just differently is the search feature. The little dialog box and button are gone but if you just start typing something in you'll see that it does come up. This isn't much better or worse than the old search system except for if you're searching for something that's settings related. I'm going to type in device manager and you'll find that no apps match your search. Whereas in Windows 7 you would see device manager at the top of the list. I could have pressed enter by now and been in the device manager. You have to go over here, click settings, then click on device manager to get into it. Let's take a look at the computer properties. That's one more strange thing worth noting about the Windows 8 start menu is that for some reason anytime you right click the menu is not a menu that appears beside your pointer but a strange big blue thing that comes up on the bottom of the screen with basically the same options uh, but sometimes in a different order. We'll go ahead and hit properties that will take us back out to the desktop and let us see the system properties. This is what it looks like for Windows 8, just this boring white box. Uh, Windows Experience Index is still here. Uh, I got a 3.8 on this old Pentium 4 system and as such my processor is the lowest subscore rating. I gotta hand it to them, uh, Windows 8 does run fairly well on this system. They, uh, I believe they specifically tuned it so that it'll run well on older hardware. And that brings me into uh, everything that's wrong with Windows 8. They did a lot of things right. They sped it up. They have uh, included an antivirus software. Windows Defender is now basically just what Microsoft Security Essentials used to be. It even looks the same. But looking at this window, you can start to see what makes Windows 8 not up to par with uh, what Windows used to be and that is, in a nutshell, how it looks graphically. 
you may have noticed that the the window edges aren't transparent and that is by default and it is not possible to re-enable that feature unfortunately so now the windows are all uh, color that it chooses based on your wallpaper in this case the turn signals on the Cadillac Seville so everything is just kind of this pale turn signal yellow which looks terrible against the green and blue whatever color of Windows Defender I mean it just looks absolutely fugly I mean there's no transparency everything's sharp edges uh, and the, the uh, title text for each window is now center aligned instead of left aligned and uh, is black with no highlighting I have to say I don't know if they could have made this look worse if they tried it's one thing to get rid of the transparency and another thing to center this but the fact that there's no highlight around the black text it just looks cheesy and terrible the least they could have done is made it match the colors down here so that it would be you know the same white as the clock and the volume control and stuff but to have no highlights and just black text on whatever strange color that it's picked for the windows borders it just looks terrible and pull up Firefox here you can really see that there is no transparency in that area whatsoever it is just a nasty mustard color here in Firefox you are seeing the exact same thing I'm seeing they also got rid of the uh, normal exit restore minimize controls now there's just these boring two-tone buttons that are just there thankfully arrow is still present the arrow shake feature can minimize the other windows usually and usually even bring them back arrow snap which snaps the windows to the side of the screen if you drag them there also still works as does that arrow feature where when you move your mouse in the bottom right corner you can see outlines on the screen of where they all are at one arrow feature that's missing though is when you press Windows key plus tab all you get now is this ugly little thing at the side of the screen alt tab still brings up a little uh, box with all your currently open windows but it's just not the same another thing that's been altered slightly is the task manager you'll notice that uh, it's been dulled down too to look a little more boring the first two tabs have been combined into one processes tab with just this stuff here the only other thing about that that is different is the tray icon is now blue instead of green also back from Windows 7 but slightly changed in Windows 8 yet again is the Explorer here as you can see it looks about the same although they have managed to slap the ribbons interface on here you may have also noticed when I scrolled my mouse across all the stuff that's open here at the bottom of the screen uh, whatever arrow feature that is still works but as you can see the transparency is nowhere to be found they are just brown outlines of the windows that just look terrible they're also a little square now as well another mysteriously vanished feature would be uh, the different sound effect before there was a variety of sound schemes now there is one I don't know where they all went but that is all that is left of those it seems like something happened to Windows 8 uh, in around 2010 or whatever some shortly after the uh, developer preview version of it I think it was things just really went south I mean their sales on this have been pretty mediocre and you can see now why I mean this is it's just a visual abomination even if the performance is good I would much rather use Windows 7 just because it looks good and just doesn't have all this confusing extra start menu applications crap it's just um, it's simpler and easier to use and while Windows 8 does seem to start up and shut down relatively quickly it's just boring ugly and it just looks unfinished and all around it was disappointing with uh, the exception of a few highlights uh, such as the good performance on the included antivirus software and the fact that they did slim it down a little bit maybe a little too much though 
hopefully they'll get it right next time. Hopefully they'll have learned from this uh, failure. Hopefully the sales numbers teach them something. And uh, hopefully the next version of uh, Windows won't be another Vista. In the end, I'll probably leave Windows 8 on this computer uh, just to play around with it. Although, honestly, I wouldn't ever actually use it on a serious work computer that I wanted to get things done on. It's just boring, ugly, and it just looks unfinished. So now that we've used it, we are going to attempt to shut it down. And this is one of the more ridiculous things that they changed in it. This took me the first time about five minutes to figure out how to shut this down. The first way is you can just click on the desktop, hit Alt F4 on the keyboard, and bring up the shutdown Windows box. And that has worked in every version of Windows as long as I can remember. Uh, but the only other way I could find, and there is no way to do it through the start menu, is that you have to move the mouse in the corner, bring up one of these silly little menus, hit settings, and then hit power. And then you can shut it down from there. But I mean, seriously, there was no point. That How many keystrokes did that just take me where it would have never taken more than two keystrokes in Windows 7. Now to its credit it shuts down pretty quickly even with all those windows open you can see the light is not anymore and it quits outputting to the monitor pretty quickly but it does stay on for a little while longer uh, after that but not too much longer as you'll see here in a minute, the power lights shut off, and in a second here, the hard drive light will shut off, and the computer will shut down, which it has just done. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the review, and I look forward to uploading some more content here over the summer. I want to thank you all for watching. Have a great week.